GLP ones, more like GLP let's lose these buns. Hilarious high level intellectual comedy aside, what the heck are these GLP ones and are they as goaded as everyone thinks they are? I'm a licensed pharmacist in three states and my name is also Grant Harding, but I like to lead off with my qualifications apparently. I'm also a medication pricing expert and I like to review meds so you guys can make better, more well-informed decisions. A really hot topic in today's day and age is these GLP-1s, or glucagon-like peptide receptor agonists. GLP-1s are so popular partly because of their scarcity. Let's be honest, they're very difficult to procure nowadays, except the FDA has removed some of them from the uh, scarcity list, and they are becoming more available, but also because they are used to treat a disease of the modern era, obesity. Could you imagine... <laughs> going back 2,000, 3,000 years and talking to our ancestors and be like, one day you're going to eat so much you'll die. Oh my gosh, Julius Caesar would have a fit. I have no idea why that came to mind, but it did. Jokes aside, obesity is very serious, actually. We all know someone who suffers from obesity, statistically speaking. In 1980, obesity prevalence was 15% in the United States. By 2000, it was 31%. And by 2020, the obesity prevalence was a whopping 42%, nearly half of America. However, this is slightly skewed because the definition of obesity is not one that any medical professional, quite frankly, is a fan of. The dreaded BMI. It's a nice little screening tool, but most of us don't like it for uh, actually diagnosing obesity. BMI, by the way, is body mass index, and it's basically a ratio of your weight and height. and doesn't account for mat muscle, um, so we all hate it. But these GLP-1s, they're mostly injectable. There's actually one oral GLP-1, which I would think that that would be more exciting to people, but most people do use the injectable nowadays. These molecules are very big, very long, chain amino acids with some chemical variants uh, typically made by our medicinal chemists chemists to last longer um, and have just different uh, metabolism rates and make it more i guess user friendly you could say glp1 is a naturally occurring hormone and whenever it's secreted it stimulates uh, insulin secretion in the pancreas and it also creates this satiating feeling this is very important. The delayed gastric emptying causes a feeling of, I'm not hungry. I'm, I'm full, right? So in essence, what these GLP-1s do is they increase insulin levels, decrease glucose levels, and it tricks the body into thinking, hey, I just ate. I can't eat again. That would be ludicrous. It's so funny. Evolutionarily evolutionarily speaking, going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, our ancestors, I mean, they existed because of this primal desire to eat. They knew, well, they didn't know when their next meal would be, and they had to eat as much as they could. We've come so far <laughs> that we now have to trick our body into thinking we just ate. Oh my goodness. This reminds me of the book, uh, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, if anybody's familiar with it. Basically, long story short, they go so far into the future where humans have solved every single problem and now have devolved into these kind of little plub, little creatures that really don't do anything but eat and sleep all day. I am thoroughly convinced that humans need a struggle to survive, and if we can't find a struggle, we'll make one of our own. Anyway, GOP1s are goaded. But let's talk about the history, because few people don't realize that they have been around since 2005. So 20 years ago, the first one on the market was Baeta and then Victoza in 2009. And that started off this cascade of events, and now everybody and their mom wants to have a GLP-1. If I was an investor, I would invest in GLP-1s. If that's even a thing, I don't know how stocks work, really. I'm just kidding, I know how they work. But <laughs> I would be very tightly associated with just about anything to do with the GLP-1 because it is in the starting stages of absolutely redefining medicine right now. And the reasons for this are, one, obviously it treats obesity, which is awesome. Two, it treats diabetes, which is goaded. And three, we keep finding more and more uses for this. This is a very, very versatile 
receptor to target with medicine. Now, going back to the beginning of life, just kidding, a couple years ago, um, the American Diabetes Association, they, they published guidelines on how to treat diabetes. And I recall, I think this was probably like 2015, no, it was 2016, actually. It was the winter of 2016. I was working for the Indian Health Service in their diabetes department. And the GLP-1s were relatively new, and they were being recommended, but not a whole lot. And I remember me and I was actually doing an internship, and my preceptor at the time was a big fan of these GLP-1s, as was I. And the reason being was because they showed such a huge decrease in weight loss. I'll get into some of the numbers here uh, after a bit. So we all, everybody in medicine knows, losing weight is a good thing, 99.999% of the time, especially when we're talking about diabetes and especially when we're talking about type 2 diabetes. Losing weight in and of itself can help, if not even cure, type 2 diabetes sometimes. Type 1 is genetic. You can't really cure that. But type 2 can be cured sometimes. And whenever you have a medication that lowers blood glucose and promotes weight loss, I mean, it's like a match made in heaven. Fast forward to today. Look at the American Diabetes Association guidelines. It is riddled with GLP-1-RA, that's glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. There's several different places in therapy for it. In fact, it's hard to find a situation where it wouldn't be recommended. Let's take a look at some of the data. Uh, you can look here and see some of the numbers with uh, the associated drop in A1C and weight loss. But my favorite, without a doubt, is the newest one on the market. It's called Zepbound, or terzepatide. Now, take a look at this chart. Terzepatide was at 15 milligram, an 8-1-C reduction of 2.46. That is insane. That is taking somebody from being on a trajectory of early uninstallment too healthy. That is a huge drop. And anyone see is a, is a rating of your blood glucose level, I guess, over time would be the best way to say it. Weight loss reduction uh, uh, from a baseline of 93.7 kilograms, 12.4 kilograms. That is nuts. That is a body changing amount of weight being lost. Percent of participants achieving A1C of less than 5.7, 50.9%. Are you kidding me? Half of the people have their diabetes controlled. Of course, like all good things, there has to be some risks, and GLP-1s are not without their risks. First of all, they're very expensive. We're talking, oh my gosh, no, not even 500. We're talking like $1,000 a month, typically. Most insurances are not very willing to cover these most of the time. So if your doctor does want to start you on, on one, you're probably going to be looking for a fight. Two, as I mentioned earlier, they're kind of difficult to find, but that's changing. So at least we can look on the bright side there. Things are changing as far as supply goes. And there are lots of uh, side effects, especially when we talk about uh, GI side effects. So there's um, substantial discomfort, I will say, in terms of nausea, vomiting, uh, flatulence. Uh, drug absorption may be um, altered, like other drugs, like oral medicine that you take while taking a GLP-1 because of that delayed gastric emptying. There's a small amount of like a thyroid C cell tumor identified in rodents. Uh, we don't know what the significance of that in humans is yet. And I also saw hair loss. I didn't even notice that, actually, on my first uh, go-through with these meds. And you know what? It's ironic about this. It can work too well. You can actually get hypoglycemic. Your, your blood glucose levels can get too low, so you have to be cognizant of that. All in all, I'm a huge fan of this class. My favorite is that bound. I'm excited to see what the future holds. It seems like every time I turn around, there's like a new di disease that these GLP-1s may or may not treat. Uh, here you can take a look at a couple of them here. The worst part for me is not really the side effects. If you look up any medication, you're going to see nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, heartburn. <laughs> um, you're going to see that on pretty much everything. But 
the worst part right now is the cost. And that's actually typical, especially when we talk about new medications. So even though these have been around for 20 years, we're having new brand names being added to the market and they're always going to be expensive. They have their patent exclusivity. These companies want to make their money back that they spent on the research and development. And especially when we talk about something that's injectable, those are always even more expensive. The good news is it's cyclical. Pretty soon these will be uh, dropping like a rock in price. And then we'll be on to the next new craze in medicine.